Dear Earthmates, we are visiting poet Abhilash Freyshe in India. Uh, we met uh, thanks to uh, in the internet and uh, I was very much impressed. I am impressed by your poem, Father. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Yes. And uh, uh, dear Abhilash, uh, uh, where do you live in uh, India? Yeah, I'm from uh, the South Indian state of India named Kerala. And I currently live in a city named Kochi. Kochi. And Abhilash means? Uh, desire. 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 This is what Yeah, in our, our language. Yes. And your language is? Malayalam. Malayalam. Malay. Malayalam. Malayalam. Um, is, is, the, is that a, a language also spoken in Malaysia? No, no. There is no, no connection with Malaysia. Okay. Uh, it's a derivation of Tamil. Have you heard about Tamil? Tamil, yes. Yeah, it's a derivation of Tamil. All right. Much later that derivation. Great. And um, uh, uh, how did your love for poetry begin? Yeah, I started writing when I was 10 years old. As a student, I started writing stories, actually. But while I was studying in my 8th standard, I was reading a book by one of the most famous writers in Malayalam. His name is Changambura. He's uh, equated with John Keats because of his lyrical quality of his writing. Such a wonderful, uh, hand, uh, he handles lyrics, lyrical language so brilliantly. That's a delight to read him. One day, an evening, I was reading the poetry of by this Changambura. Then I felt uh, an inner urge to write some lines. That was, I call it a poetic feeling, something like a poetic uh, uh, ecstasy, something. Then I jot down a few lines. I mean, uh, uh, some 15 or 20 lines at a stretch. Then I felt that this, this is something different from which I have been writing so far. That was something different. Then later, I sent it to uh, the editors of my college magazine, and they liked it very much, and they published it in the front page of the magazine, I mean, in the inner page of the magazine. And uh, everybody loved it. And many came and congratulated me for that. That was my first uh, experience of writing poetry, uh, a real poetry. Before that, I was writing poetry, but I don't consider those lines as poetry. Uh, that was how I uh, began writing poetry. Then uh, later, I was doing my English literature uh, degree, graduation. Then I was uh, fascinated by the Western writers, especially by uh, John Keats, uh, Shelley, Wordsworth, Robert Browning and all. Uh, especially I like the style of Robert Browning, the way he writes poetry, especially the dramatic monologues, which has fascinated me, revealing the inner feelings by uh, narrating, the, uh, uh, narrating in the way of monologue. So I think many, most of my poems, not most, but many of my poems are written like a more dramatic monologue, include the latest work, Father. Wonderful. And I also studied English literature and uh, John Keats is I one know. of my favorites. Uh, yes. He wrote The Flea, didn't he? The Flea. The Flea. Or oh, yeah. is it John Donne? Yeah, yeah. John, was it John Donne, John Keats, uh, yeah, similar, I'm also the same school, no. metaphysical poets, right? Yeah, metaphysical yeah, metaphysical poets. Very nice. Yeah. And um, uh, uh, in Turkey, we respect uh, Tagore, um, and of course, um, uh, I have friends. Meher Pestonji, for example, Dr. Oh, Shamenaz, yes, yeah. and many friends. And I uh, um, sh uh, showed interest in the Upanishads, Rig Veda. Uh, yeah. I've written distillations uh, from them, based on them. 
and Narayana, the 14th century wise uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. philosopher. And um, um, how do you write? I mean, uh, is there a specific time of the day? For example, morning, at night, any time? Uh, actually, poem comes from nowhere, you know. No? Yeah, we have no time when the inspiration of poetry comes into our mind. Uh, sometimes I write even while traveling. Sometimes, <laughs> uh, for me, uh, usually I write a short poem, short, shorter poems, and whenever it can come from the mind, whenever uh, it can, the inspiration can come at any time. I used to write most of my poems were written, I mean, not most, but uh, my one of the best poetic time considering writing has been during the, my time in uh, doing, uh, li doing studying literature. And I used to go to the riverside. It's called Periyar. In Kerala, we have a river called Periyar. And I used to sit by the side of the river and I used to get inspiration from the whatever is happening the, uh, from the nature, river flowing and all. Then I used to write down a lot of poems. That was when I was studying the literature, literature course. But nowadays, uh, anything can strike our mind at any time. Could be anything. Sometimes uh, I write the latest poem I have written about the, the interval between the rain. Uh, there is a silence between the rain. No? Uh, music, rain is like a music. And uh, between two rains, there is a music, uh, there is a silence. So pregnant with a lot of feelings that it can be uh, ecstasy, sometimes uh, 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 bereavement, sometimes uh, lost love. Many things can be there. So uh, it's one of the uh, way that poetry touches me. And that's why I write. Actually, there is no specific time for me to write a po write poetry. Um, but usually I like to write at the night, especially at night, because it is the calmest time when I am about to go to sleep. Then uh, we, we, our mind is recollected and serene. And I think that's the best time to write. But even though the poetry can touch us and the poetic inspiration can spur us at any time. Uh, do you use uh, uh, paper, a notebook, uh, pen or pencil? Or is there a specific color of your, the pen uh, that you prefer? Uh, what what do you use? Do, do you directly write on the computer? What do you do? Yeah, nowadays I'm mostly writing on the, uh, uh, often on the mobile uh, mobile phone, on the WhatsApp. Uh, I write and text it to my own WhatsApp number and I save it. Then sometimes uh, for a longer poem and more serious ones, I prefer the computer and I have a software. Uh, I mean, in Malayalam we have a software. In English, uh, we use word, uh, but uh, I think long ago, since I left the uh, writing on the paper and pen, you know, the world has changed and it's a digital world. And uh, long ago, I used to prefer blue ink for writing pen in my earlier days. Usually, I wrote in diaries. I had, I had two, three diaries. I mean, diary books, no, notebooks, and I used to write in them. But uh, I think uh, it is so long since I have written anything on the book. Um, what languages do you speak? Uh, of course, speak English Malayalam. and Mala yes. Malayalam. Malayalam, yeah, Malayalam. it's our mother tongue. Usually, yes, uh, in my home, in my family, everybody speaks in Malayalam. Uh, but when in official matters, I switch on to English. Yes. Uh, there are more than a thousand languages in India, aren't there? Yeah. Yeah, a lot of dialects are there. Uh, even in Malayalam, there are different dialects in our Kerala, in Northern language, in uh, Southern language, Middle Kerala language. There's like differences. The intonations are different. Uh, we are, uh, I'm living in the middle of Kerala, Arnaukulam Kochi. We have, even in, in this area, we have different dialects, different intonations. Interesting. Mm. Great. And, uh... Um, when you write a poem, um, let's say a year passes, do you go back to the poem and make changes? Or a few years pass? Earlier, then... I, 
I did not use it to make changes, but uh, as time progresses, I feel that uh, there should be uh, there uh, add some additions are needed, some revision is needed, and I have begun to make revisions. But in the olden days, I used to write as it is, and I never changed. But I think now I feel that something we feel that after writing something, we feel that something should be something could be added, a couplet or a stanza. Then I go. Sometimes I feel this word is not perfect. I think better word can be chosen. Then I. I, I alter the lines and I add new lines, better words. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, uh, I have the same attitude. I enjoy revising my poems. And yeah, uh, I... uh, some poets, uh, when they publish a poem, they prefer not to make any changes. But I am not a slave right. of my oh. published poem. I, uh, I can't. Be I must be free to make you know changes. Yeah, changes. Yeah, uh, yeah. And um, how about the other genres of literature? Uh, how about short stories, n novels, or essays? Are you interested in? Yeah, that? definitely. I'm actually I'm interested in literature as a whole. Whatever, especially I have written a few novels as well. Some of them are published. One is the one is in English. It's named. The End of Wars. It was published uh, five years ago. And uh, another one is in Malayalam. That had also won a, uh, an accolade, a an award in our, lang in our language. That is called Prabhanjagada, which means Ballad of the Universe. I'm planning to uh, translate it into English and publish it in English. Then drama, I used to write drama. My father was a drama actor and I used to write dramas. The school days I used to, yeah. Yeah. So you are a play. A play you, you are a playwright too. You are a playwright. I used to write, not seriously, but I have written plays. I have written script for sight and sound shows, long ones, uh, which had been watched by thousands of people. A few of them. Yeah. Uh, actually. Yes. Yeah, uh, I have a flair for the interest to write uh, scripts and all, uh, drama and everything. Even uh, in my school days, I used to write. Uh, for my uh, my classmates, and we used to perform on the stage. Later, uh, I shift, uh, shifted into other lyrical and novel poetry and all. Um, still, uh, drama is there. Yes. Uh, you enjoy writing dramatic monologues. Uh, I do too, yeah, actually. Definitely, definitely. And, you know, a concrete character in a concrete situation saying certain Same. things in a context. Same, yeah. It's, uh, I love it too, yes. Um, and um, uh, one of my plays is a, a series of portraits you know one character yeah, I... comes and says something a few minutes yeah, each yeah. Uh, portrait is a very important genre I think but not many people yeah. write portraits uh, yeah. whether live or um, yes um, when you read, um, um, is it easy for you to read a novel? For me, it's not easy because I want the conciseness of poetry. And in many novels, yeah. I find unnecessary sentences, unnecessary words. I want to cut them, you know, with, <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, am, yeah. so I am not a good uh, novel reader. Uh, I love Dostoevsky and some, a few other, okay. uh, but usually I find uh, them unnecessarily long. Okay. Uh, what What is your opinion? Are you comfortable with reading novels? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I started reading mainly novels, but I think longer novels, uh, sometimes I get into a pause and because since it is long, you know, I prefer shorter novels, uh, shorter novels so that we can uh, enjoy reading. In the earlier days, it was not a problem. I used to read voraciously, ravenously in my during my college days. I think in two years, uh, in my college days, I had written almost 400 books. I have, I have read uh, such a passionate reader I was. But as the time progresses and I get aged, I the reading volume gets uh, lessened. And now I can't read as I used to read earlier. Now, I'm slower. Uh, I take time in reading. Sometimes I go into reflections. 
it takes time for it to, even to finish a novel it takes a lot of time nowadays yes uh, yeah. uh, uh, i i still have not read tolstoy's war and peace uh oh. I, i need to, uh, because if i were not so, too, too if, long, yeah. if i were not a poet uh, it would be easier for me to read i think i would yeah. i could be uh, a better reader in the sense yeah. of reading more but uh, i have things to write so the mind goes to you know Definitely. writing is more attractive than reading <laughs> yeah fine that's fine um Uh, is uh, uh, poetry uh, popular where you live? I mean, yeah, you... definitely. I think uh, here Kerala is one of the most literate states in India, the number one state in India as far as as far as literacy literacy is considered. Most people read, and uh, here there are very strong magazines, very powerful literary magazines, and uh, very good readers like uh, writers like uh, M. T. Vasudevan Nair. Uh, Vaika Muhammad Bashir and all their works have been widely translated across across India. Uh, uh, very interested. Uh, people are very interested in reading here. I mean, writing also. Wonderful, and uh, uh, are you interested in science or social sciences or physical or natural sciences or? philosophy or yes. yeah I, i i like philosophy and i'm interested in science but uh, even though during my school days i was not very interested because i was more attracted to the arts and all but still i'm interested I, nowadays i'm more uh, in, uh, interested to what what is happening in the world in the world of science and all then in philosophy i have done a course in philosophy i'm very interested in philosophy i like Arist from, even from, starting from the aristotle plato and all Even the latest uh, philosophers, uh, even Immanuel Kant, uh, Hegel, and all. No, uh, I'm interested. Uh, I used to read whenever I get a chance. Mm. Yes, uh, one of my favorite philosophers was Bertrand Russell. When I was a ah, teenager, Russell, yeah, yeah. yeah, I admired him because although he was uh, in his nineties, he was interested in. world politics world affairs and he was a yes, yes. A, um, a secular humanist uh, activist uh, you know yeah. the uh, russell tribune uh, about the vietnam war etc yeah it's it's good to have good examples in every field it's it's good yes. um uh, when you uh, um write a poem do you, do you share it with uh, uh, your uh, family members or friends uh, or are you shy about it really uh, i when i began writing as a student i was really shy about it because i thought uh, in my family there uh, even though my dad, father was an actor he used to read well but still in my house nobody used to write So I was thinking that writing is something bizarre and uh, uncommon. So I used to hide them for a long time, and they did not know what I was writing. I used to write in hiding of, of very often, until after many years, my father understood that I was I have begun writing. Then he began to uh, support me and encourage me. But later, uh, during my college days, especially during my uh, degree in literature, uh, there was a friend of mine called Rajiv Michael. then i used to show whatever i write to him and he uh, used to read and he was a very good very uh, uh, sensible man and he used to tell me suggestions and make suggestions and uh, sometimes appreciate him then i believe that uh, there should be someone to read our, our poems whatever is whatever we write there should be someone at least one person one person will will do what we write that will make us more uh, Uh, more passionate and satisfied so nowadays uh, i since we have social media and facebook and all when i write a poem i usually put it on the facebook facebook page or on the or as my status of my whatsapp and all so there are some a few, few people who read regularly read and all but uh, i sometimes now 
I show my wife. My wife's name is Sunita. And I show my poem. I never write a, write a poem to her. Or at least my closer friends, I will send them my WhatsApp. Then they will <laughs> give their response. But I, I think someone should be there. Mm, yes, yes. Um, it's nice to hear an echo. When you write something, you say something, and a reader is yeah, like definitely. Yeah, giving yeah. you an echo. No, the response that what should uh, what others think about us. At least one person that will do. Uh, th that's true. That's true. Um, uh, yes, and you said your father was an actor. Yeah, that's very good. And yeah. so uh, your love for drama theater of course is related and yeah yes, um, does does he enjoy uh reading your dramatic monologues for example your poem father did, did uh, actually he... uh it was to him that i gave the first copy of her father when it arrived from usa uh i gave him a father because he's my father and i gave father to my father that was interesting way and i had a snap with him with me uh, it is with me, uh, cherished one, and uh, he loved it actually. But mm. he's 80 years, 80 plus years old. Uh, with, uh, I think his eyesight is not very, uh, not excellent, but uh, managing with uh, with the aid of uh, spectacles. But he he liked it. He's very happy when now when I write, when I accomplish in my literary career. He's so happy because he it was his dream to become become a writer. Oh, but he he. Actually, he wanted to become a writer. Actually, but because of the pressure from the office and office work and all, he he was an accountant, and so he had to he did not get time to write. But still, within him, there I think I have felt that there is a thirst for and a passion for writing. So he likes you know, me writing. Uh, so you have a very nice father-son relationship. Yeah, definitely, definitely. This is very yeah. important and. Yeah. yeah, wonderful, wonderful. Um, you admire his acting. He admires your writing. You know, to artists. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is very nice, very nice. Uh, um, yeah, um, some um, artists in general um, do not are not supported. By their families. Um, yeah, I know. They, I know that. Yeah. That's uh, not easy. It's not an easy yeah. challenge. Um, uh, when you you write in English too. Yeah. Um, in your mm, mother tongue, uh, uh, and in English. Well, English is also a mother tongue in a way because, yeah, bilingual. You are at least bilingual. Um, is it true, for example, I sometimes write in Turkish, sometimes in mm -hmm. English, and yeah. both both languages are very different from each other. And so yeah. sometimes a poem is better in English and another poem is better in Turkish. Uh, yeah, do you feel that too? Uh, do you feel it when you write? Definitely. That's my thought. I thought sometimes uh, even if you think about my book father, I know that I can't express that same poem so forcefully in my mother tongue. I'm very sure. Some poems can be expressed in English only. Some some sort of expressions, some words, we need the aid of a language. Sometimes I prefer Malayalam better to articulate my feelings. But I think it's a, it depends on the topic. Depends on the topic. Uh, so sometimes I think mostly for poems, I prefer English. I'm com more comfortable in English in, when I write poems in English than yeah. Malayalam. Uh, and when I write, um, I love Turkish uh, because it is really interesting in many ways. Yeah. Uh, when I want to write um, without auto censorship, self censorship, I prefer English because English is the world language and uh, so I feel myself more free um, yeah, definitely. When, when I write. We have more reach also in English. No? We can give uh, greater readership, wider readership. Yeah, also, 
also the immediate pressures in one's country uh, are not felt um, so much. Uh, yeah, yeah. Do you give uh, sometimes advice to young aspiring poets, uh, you know, young people, younger people, you are young, uh, yeah. to younger people? Definitely. Uh, whenever I get a chance, some sometimes some younger poets call me, they consult me and ask me how to develop their writing skills and all. I, last year, I used to go to a school and uh, give them some tips about writing, uh, budding children. And I encourage uh, children of my family to write. And I especially give some tips to them. Uh, my Both of my children have started writing. Uh, my elder one is 13 year old and the younger one is 10 year old and both of them have written. Younger one has written I think five or six stories. Uh, elder one has started writing. So I'm happy. But I'm happy to encourage others when when other young young men, young people come to me for it. I give them tips and how share my writing experiences and they're happy. And I love to that other I love to see that other coming others coming up. Great. So you encourage people Definitely. to write. Mm, yeah. yeah. I, I, it's, it's interesting. We are um, really alike in many ways. Uh, yeah, definitely. You know, sure, we, sure. We both like yeah. Yeah. dramatic monologues of, and um, yeah, yeah, encouraging yeah. people, etc., writing in yes. two languages. Um, it, becoming a father... Um, did it affect your writing when you be after? Uh, because, you know, it's it's a process. Uh, yeah, yeah. In some way, uh, I think the number of project productions. So uh, for a long, for some time, it had been decreased. I think because we have responsibilities, family response. I mean, we have to take care of the children. We have to uh, cater to the needs of uh, wife and family. Then we get lesser time. When I was alone as a bachelor, uh, we have nobody was there to restrict us. Not doesn't mean that they are restricting me, but we have to give time to them, family. Then we have to find time for writing. Earlier, I was much more free, so uh, there was no problem in writing. Whenever I want, I was to write. But now I have to find time. So the production has come. I mean, the uh, output has come uh, little down. I think in that way. Uh, there's no other no other problem, but the output is lesser. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, how is the cultural atmosphere uh, in the city you live? I mean, uh, for example, uh, um, what religions are there? Um, uh, uh, Hindu Hindus. Muslims, so Christians, uh... Muslims, Christians, and uh, mainly in Kerala we have predominantly Hindus, mm -hmm. and the second uh, uh, second comes Muslims, mm -hmm. and we Christians are a third in numbers, and in, even in the Hinduism there are many caste systems, you know, Brahmins, Kshatriyas, Shudras, and all. Even uh, even there are people who do not be belong to these four castes, even lower caste people. Uh, a hundred or hundred or hundred fifty years ago, there was serious problems, caste issues here. But uh, by mainly by the reformers and revolutionaries, a lot of problems are solved. And generally, Kerala is one of the finest places in India to live because we have much more cultural harmony and cultural exchange. Uh, we generally consider people as equals, even though I am little, uh, little. Uh, not actually scared, but I'm worried about the current uh, sweeping in of some uh, caste religious issues are coming up slowly. There is some uh, a polarization is uh, minutely seen here and there. People are slowly talking about religion, but it was not like that ten years ago when I was a uh, when I was a student and then as a young man. Uh, there was no problem such. But nowadays, people speak more about religion, the differences in religion, dividing themselves. And my book, Father, is actually uh, addressing this problem, uh, this 
uh, discrimination and uh, this what you say disparity uh, disunity and all because that is how i see the father father is actually a common factor that unites different culture different people different religion so i believe that there should be a common uh, common element that is above every every differences even though there are there are lot of differences in the world people are different white and black uh, indians and africans americans europeans there is a lot of reason different languages there are lot of reason to be different but we should find some i will personally believe that we should find a common factor that uh, as you say earth mates uh, we are all earth mates that's one reason to be united uh, for me being earth mate and the son children of one father that's a uh, vision of father children of one father and uh, maybe if we consider earth as our mother then we have common mother earth then i think we can solve every problem in the world uh, if by yes. even the war was even wars are uh, wars are also a result of this this unity you and me by uh, this dichotomy between you and me so it can be solved uh, from uh, by far, love of the father loving father so children also should love each other then there should be love should be the supreme reigning power i agree so uh, yeah so yeah. in kochi i am actually worried about the no, no, i'm not exactly kochi in, in all of india some sort of polarization is seen uh, i i seriously and solemnly wish that at least they uh, at tagore uh, as you said ravindranath tagore one of the greatest of our poets said we have one sky let my let my country awake to the freedom to see uh, one sky one land one one nation beyond all differences cultural differences we can be one as yes. least as a human being at least we yeah. should be one yeah i agree yes we we are together yes together, and um, uh, what would you recommend or suggest to young earthmates uh, especially what would you like to say to them and imagine that you're talking to 8 billion people now 8 billion yeah. people and um, what would you like to say the same thing uh, uh, earlier i have go, i i have heard a thought that when we look into the earth we can see ba- boundaries between countries we can see boundaries between states we can see boundaries between people they are uh, building fences between their houses and they are become more and more alone and uh, secluded isolated from others but if you go out of the earth and look from the moon there is no barriers actually we can we don't have any barriers we see only the, the whole earth just a green earth and a blue water so i think the earth mates can think about that beyond the barriers we have a lot of reasons to be uh, to divide among ourselves but if find out a reason to unite to love and to be earth mates that's one reason we can we can we are all merged in the on this earth we are all friends on this earth and we maximum we live 70 80 90 years maximum 100 if it goes beyond then why should we quarrel and make wars why should we go on for after battles we have we, we can spend it with the peace and love so that's what True. i i have to tell great yeah and um, you're welcome to join the earthmates network uh, you. you know meetings when you want uh, we meet Thank online you. on the first definitely, and definitely. third on the first and third sunday at uh, yeah you can send me a link if you wish uh, yeah at 9:30 uh, pm uh, your time yeah, uh, yeah i'll be okay i'll be fine that time is fine uh, yeah i will i will send you the link as well uh, definitely i'll be joining after. yeah great. well uh, thank you so much i have i'm very happy to have had this conversation i'm happy to and my uh-huh. regards to your family every member definitely i will tell yes yeah my wife uh, is sunita uh, my children i told two boys and the elder one is called ezik ezik is a short form of ezekiel short form the younger one is izan i z a n izan so we are four living happily with love great thank you so thank much you. and please send me a short bio note of yours Definitely. will you and uh, where you live on the map if you take a photo 
yeah, of the of the on the map as well. Yeah, I'll take a screenshot and, and uh, yes. yeah. Great. Thank you so much. And um, then in a few days, I will uh, uh, place our interview on my YouTube channel and share it so with happy. internationally. Yeah, great. Thank, we are together. So we are together. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, care. we are at Smith. At Smith. Yes. Yes. Thank you so Thank much. You. Yes, uh, Abilash Frazier. Uh, it's a great honor and uh, joy to be with you. Thank you. Thank you. Same to you. Bye. See you. Bye.